Those are some big doors. <laughs> Her name is Emily. Emily. She's beautiful, isn't she? She's beautiful. Yeah. They give you a good camera, I'll say that. I can do uh, capture a few moments. Guys, this is a barefoot first. Here I am, sitting in a Humvee in the USS New York. there is the new port. So that is a fast transport ship. Thing of beauty. So that's the USS New York. And we're gonna board that here as soon as we get off the submarine. And what you guys will find is that it is basically like a floating uh, tribute to those who lost their lives during 9-11. And the ship is actually manufactured with about seven and a half tons of steel that were taken from the Twin Towers. Big doors. <laughs> How'd it go? Good look, right? All the events have gone good. How you doing? All right. Hi, good morning. Welcome aboard USS New York. I'm Ensign Adam Ben I'm a service warfare officer on board. I'm really excited to have you on board and we could actually show you around some of the neat things that we do on board our ship here. So we're standing right now is our uh, quarter deck, which is actually just behind us here, but right behind me here you'll see we actually have our well deck. So inside the well deck, we do have uh, various vehicles. We have an LCAC as well as some marine vehicles that we actually have the capacity to take on board with us. The whole ship is a museum, so when you look around here, you'll notice you have all sorts of memorabilia and everything to recognize and remember what happened on September 11th, 2001. So here we have some of the photographs of the victims of the events of 9-11. All right, so right now we're standing here in our upper vehicle stowage area. So if you look behind me here, it's actually pretty empty. But during normal underway operations, especially as we're getting ready to gear up to go on a deployment, you'll see this area filled with the uh, marine vehicles that we take with us. So uh, our total capacity, we can have upwards of 400 sailors on board, as well as up to 700 marines. So we'll take them, and our job is to really make sure we take them and get them into the fight. So, in essence, this is basically like a giant garage here in a way, isn't it? I guess you could say I've never heard it put that way, but yeah, I guess that works. <laughs> and what are you able to speak to what types of vehicles go in here at all? So, it really depends. So, uh, we can have Humvees. The uh, major thing that we take actually on board is LCs and LCACs. So, those will actually come into the well deck where we were standing earlier. And as part of that process, uh, they can have different vehicles on them. So, it can be Humvees, AVs, ACUs, a whole plethora of different options here. So, whatever the Marines need to support, we're here to, we're here to do it for them. So right here you see uh, one of our murals here pointing, this actually represents our ship's crest. So uh, obviously 9-11 is, hits really close home, this being the USS New York. So a lot of our ship's crest actually em embodies that. So you'll see here the Phoenix represents us, how the nation rose from the ashes after the tragedies of that event. On the shield you see on the eagle, on the Phoenix's chest here, you see dark blue representing NYPD. The red represents FDNY and the light blue represents the Port Authority Police Department, the three major first responders that were involved in uh, responding to 9-11. You also see the two Twin Towers there, uh, that represent obviously Twin Towers from 9-11. And three uh, stars here actually represent the three battle stars uh, that the USS New York, the former USS New York, the battleship won during World War II. So obviously a lot of history here and all embodied in this one ship's crest that we're very proud to have here. It's beautiful. What a work of art. So 
right now we're standing inside of our hangar bay. So uh, being an LPD, one of the major things that we have the ability to do is to uh, land marine aircraft as well as take them through our well deck. One of the neat things we can do is we actually do it simultaneously. So inside the hangar bay here, we can have up to two Ospreys as well as various uh, other Marine Corps aircraft. So our flight deck is actually capable of landing any uh, helicopter or tilt rotor in the Marine Corps airplane that has vertical takeoff and landing is that what that is the v-stall exactly just like that so it actually takes off like a helicopter and then it can turn into a more of a fixed wing type approach so right now we're standing in our uh, ship's medical department uh, being an lpd we actually do have a full-time doctor who's as part of our ship's company here as well as an independent duty corpsman as well as a team of hm or uh, corpsmen that are actually part of our team make sure that our sailors and marines on board are provided the best quality of care that we can uh, so when we actually do go underway and we actually go on a deployment we have the capacity to embark a fleet surgical team and as part of that, uh, we'll, we'll bring surgeons, uh, physicians assistants, nurses. And we actually have a full ward here. We're capable of uh, conducting operations here. Uh, fun fact as well on this particular ship, we also have a dentist. So uh, the ship's crew is always able to make sure we get uh, dental care as well. We actually have the capacity to run a full surgical operation here. So uh, while we are underway or deployed or anything like that, that might, uh, missions that the Navy may send us on, we do have the capacity to uh, run a full operating room, which uh, allows us to make sure we give our sailors and Marines the best quality of care. We continue through this way. You'll also see that we actually have the ability to run a full ward as well. So we're here to support the patients from the beginning, from when they have that initial injury, through surgery, and then the recovery process as well. All right, so right now we're standing in what we call Broadway. This is our longest passageway throughout the ship. Uh, and you'll actually see here is a little bit of uh, some of the more memorabilia of USS New York that we have uh, in honor of 9-11 in that memory here. So as we continue forward, you'll actually walk up here to our firefighters memorial. So this right here actually has some more photographs of uh, the brave firefighters, part of FDNY and the surrounding departments that responded and actually unfortunately lost their lives during 9-11. As part of that as well, you'll see we have some other recognition. We have some photographs taken. Uh, see you also uh, FDNY celebrating the news after uh, the raid on Osama bin Laden's compound and some patches here over as well to your left here that you can see from FDNY and the various uh, ladders that responded. So this obviously being, like I said, our main passageway that goes across our main level here on the ship. Uh, this is more memorabilia to New York City itself, uh, so you can kind of see the different uh, plays and musicals that have gone through uh, Broadway that we like to kind of represent here, just to bring a little more New York pride to the ship. Well, you know what? I'm a big Mets fan. Let's go Mets. Absolutely. So right now we're standing in what we call the subway stop. And this is kind of one of the main congregation areas. Uh, it's kind of center point of the ship, so a lot of people come through here. Uh, it's uniquely called the subway stop because we actually do have here a uh, subway station. It's very much so themed after it, as well as a subway bench stop here. So it's kind of one of our central points of the ship, and uh, everyone's kind of loves to come and hang out here at the subway stop. So quick question. I see the phones here, and they kind of almost remind me of the old, uh, the old pay phones. When my son calls me from the ship, is this the type of phone that he would be calling me from? Something exactly like that. So it is uh, very much so like an old school. Uh, pay phone type thing but just like you would in the old days take a dialing card push a punch in the number and you're able to call home all right guys so by now you all know where I'm from Brighton Beach Brooklyn New York baby and I was a lifeguard right there on Coney Island right the parachute jump would be right around there and this is Seagate and I was a lifeguard right there on the very last bay Bay 22 quite a few years ago so right now we've ended back up in our uh, upper vehicle stowage area where we started off a little bit earlier today. And I kind of alluded to in our crest earlier, but you can see here we have the, the red, the dark blue, and the light blue, again representing FDNY, NYPD, and Port Authority Police Department. As we mentioned we have that piece of World Trade Center steel that we walk underneath every day, but very appropriate so, and with a lot of symbology actually comes the fact that we do have seven and a half tons of World Trade Center steel in the bow of our ship itself. So of the three ships that are actually uh, named and created in memory of the terrorist attacks 9-11, we are the only ship that actually carries seven and a half tons tons of World Trade Center steel with us. So everywhere we go in the world, we take the memory and the sacrifice that happened on 9-11 with us. What can you tell me about this vehicle, sir? So this vehicle is a replacement for the vehicle right there, which is an MV. The vehicle name is a JLTV, that stands for Joint Light Tactical Vehicle. So it was built by the company called Ashkash. It costs about like half a million. Each one, each individual vehicle is half a million dollars. Yes, sir. Can you tell me um, anything about this area, where we are, what this is? Uh, right now we're about to walk down into the well deck. So well deck is how we conduct our amphibious operations. I kind of alluded to it earlier, but uh, in terms of taking the Marines from the beach, getting them on board, and then putting them back on the beach where we need to take them to, this is what we do. So we actually will flood this area. This will be filled with water underway. 
and we're able to take in this uh, vehicles like this here. So this large vehicle you see in the very back is actually a landing craft air cushion or an LCAC. And that's where how all these vehicles that you see on board actually came on board. So they load up on this and we bring them on board the ship that way. And then we host the Marines, we host their equipment, and then we take them where they need to go. All right, so these are LCACs. We are ship to shore connectors. Uh, we bring Marine equipment to the beach as fast as possible. We have four ETF-40 Bravo turbine engines and two auxiliary power units. Uh, it consists of a five-man crew. I'm the engineer. You have a craft master. He's the one that drives the craft. Engineer, he's the one that does all the engines, fuel transfer system, lube oil, hydraulics. You have a deck engineer that fixes the craft if it breaks while we're over water. Then you have a port lookout, and that's normally a bosun mate. Uh, and they uh, just keep an eyes on the port side where the craft master cannot see. Guys, this is a barefoot first. Here I am sitting in a Humvee in the USS New York. Hello, my name is Sinuchi Vaquero Alvarez. So this is the USS Cole and this the actual USS Cole. This is the ship that was attacked in October 12th. So we are actually standing on US history. We're actually going to show you around the Hall of Heroes and the different areas that are very dear to us. A lot of things changed after this ship was uh, struck back at that time. This is a warship, it's not a museum. And what that means is that we are making the Navy better one day at a time. Follow me this way. Watch your step over here, there's all kinds of things that would grab you or snag you. Some of the sailors are going to be having lunch again, so we are going to try not to be too invasive from them. We're not going to skin the ship? Okay. So we made it to the foxhole. This is called Emily main gun every ddg has one of these and they all have a name her name is emily emily she's beautiful isn't she she's beautiful and she's very accurate people say that she's temperamental i don't mean i don't know what they mean by that it says we remember and right there by the barrel you see a few stars and there were a few stars on the other side there's going to be 17 stars total mm -hmm. that represent each one of the sailors that we lost in october 2000. uss cole is named after sergeant cole and sergeant cole was actually a war hero even before he became the namesake for the ship so sergeant cole was a war hero during guadalcanal during the battle of the pacific when they were in guadalcanal they were trapped and their enemy forces were attacking them with those machine mounts. So he had a grenade, went to a post, destroyed the enemy post, go to the other post. Wow. Post, go to the other post, destroy the enemy post in the third assault. He got killed, he was awarded the Medal of Honor. Uh. But the highest award a person can get is becoming the namesake for a ship. So he's the namesake for a ship. Hence we have the three grenades that you see in our crest and is very dear to us. Can I take some video of walking through here? Is that okay? Or uh, not? Yeah, not it's, it's, it's yeah. cool to show the how you folk sailors are on the ship and how they get from place to place. What's it like to open one of those doors? Are they as heavy as they look? They are um, uh, created to make sure the water stays out. Well, that's true. <laughs> water tight. Yep. What is this? Does this have a name, what we're walking through here? Yes, when we're walking, this is called the Port Break. Port Break. Yep. Okay. And it's uh, kind of like this nice little tunnel. Yeah. 
get you out of the heat a little bit when when it's uh, a hot day. It can, it can be good. Yep. So right on this side, we're actually kind of like on the focusing over here. We are standing right here on American history. This is where the attack occurred. So All right here in this spot. This is, spot. If you see our shoes right here. Yeah. That's where the all this was gone. So this is where the explosives went off, right here. Yep. So this all had to be replaced. Yep. It started from here. They touched. Uh, essentially, they came this close. Right. And of course, an explosion is a big ball. Of right. We train for all kinds of casualties. Maybe, hopefully, it would never happen. But when something happens, we always fall down to the best level of knowledge that we have. Yeah. It's incredible that they were able to save it the way they did. Do you? Can you? Tell me a little bit about after the explosion, like right after the explosion, but it must have been a lot because it was under the water line, correct? Partially. Part of that was under the water. So water was just rushing into the ship. Some of that, yes. So, here, but yeah, it was a gigantic hole. So let's uh, imagine that this is the top of the of the ship. Right. And this is the bottom of the ship. Right. So the hole kind of like goes way over this here. This is the water line, so this uh, exploded yeah, so here. Kind of like this, you know, if you think about it, you know, just like how that, that we're giving that opportunity for all of us to become better. Exactly. To make the next generation smarter and better informed than we ever were. Yep. Thank you.